Happy Friday, manna gatherers. We are here on this Friday to receive God's good stuff from Exodus 4, 24 through 26. So let's jump right in and hear these words from the New Life Version, the NLV translation of the Bible. The Lord met Moses at a resting place on the way, and he would have put him to death. But Zipporah took a knife and cut off her son's piece of skin and threw it at Moses' feet. And she said, For sure, you are a husband of blood to me. Then the Lord let him alone. Zipporah said, You are a husband of blood because of the religious act of becoming a Jew. Okay, so just as surprising as these verses have been from Exodus 4, so was stumbling upon this article in my Wesleyan Theological Journal that I subscribe to. Um, it's There is a article in here from fall 2013 titled Zipporah's Cut, Wesley and the Fathers on Circumcision. I was looking for another article for my sermon for this Sunday, and lo and behold, this article, which I confess I had skipped over back in the fall of 2013, because like these verses it is based on, I had no interest in reading it. But I do now, of course. Timing is everything clearly. I, it, this article, waited for all these years to be read, to be useful, and it was a very useful article, shedding a very Wesleyan perspective on these verses and giving me a whole bunch to think about. Most of you know how much I love my dear John Wesley. If you don't know me very well or don't know my love of John Wesley, just know this. My husband gets very jealous of a dead man. Every time I talk about John Wesley, he rolls his eyes and tells me to stop. And even though we have three sons, and I have begged to name one of them Wesley every time we have had a son, I've begged to name one Wesley, I have been forbidden to use that name for any child of ours. And it is entirely rooted in my love of John Wesley and Hiram's jealousy of John Wesley, even though he's dead. That being said... I did not like John Wesley's reading and interpretation of Exodus 4, 24 through 26. He claims, John Wesley claims, that an angel of God was sent to kill Moses because Moses had willingly, unequally yoked himself with a Midianite wife, and so he had neglected his faith. He had turned his back on God, and he had not performed the ritualistic sign of the covenant of circumcising his sons, which was commanded in Genesis 17 for every male, even infants, to have done, to be done, to be considered sons of the covenant. For several reasons, that all does not jive with me, nor did it with the author, thankfully, of this Wesleyan theological journal. She, Karen Strand Winslow, author of this very pertinent article, it, this article I can't tell you, it was like my manna falling from heaven right into my lap. It was there to guide me and to lead me deeper into conversation with this, these verses from Exodus 4. Well, anyways, I agree with Winslow, the author of this article I found in the Wesleyan Theological Journal not so much Wesley himself, um, that this text leads, this text, Exodus 4, 24 through 26, lends itself to guide a conversation on what makes one in and out of the faith with God. Who is included, should be included. Who sh is excluded, should be excluded. Should anyone be excluded? And all that begins with a conversation, once again, about our leading lady, Zipporah. Yes, Zipporah was a, Midian a Midianite, so by Jewish standards, strict standards, not part of God's in crowd, the covenant crowd. However, we can say that God's prevenient grace, that Wesleyan term of preventing grace, that grace that comes before we even recognize God's presence, with us or at work in our lives, that grace, this grace, this prevenient grace was with Moses through Zipporah. God, as we said on Wednesday, um, gave Moses Zipporah because when Moses fled from Egypt into the wilderness, into the desert, um, God brought the two together. 
She, Zipporah, is Moses' family. That is what she claims in these verses, saying, you are a husband of blood to me. We are more than just husband and wife. We are relatives. We are connected. We are bound together. Your God is my God. Your faith is my faith. Um, we can say that these verses wanted to make sure that not only were Moses and his sons considered in and a part of the covenant crowd, but that Zipporah wasn't left out, that Zipporah was included among God's covenant people as they began to enter Egypt. Even she was included as a doubly, a doubly marginal person. That is, Zipporah was both a woman who had no voice or rights, she was essentially property of Moses, but she was also a foreigner, doubly, mar doubly marginal. Furthermore, it is Zipporah, a woman and a foreigner, who performs the circumcision, not Moses, as most would expect to have been done or have it performed by Moses. In fact, little known biblical, biblical trivia, there are only three people in the whole Bible who are named as circumcisers. Abraham, Joshua, and Zipporah. Zipporah then is directly linked to these great fathers of our faith. To me, then, these verses become an example of God's radical, all-inclusive inclusive love for everyone. A theme throughout the Bible is God's concern for outsiders, God's concern for the weak, the poor, the marginalized, the oppressed, the women, the children, the widowed. Zipporah falls into this category, and these verses make it clear that she was included. Not excluded because she was a woman, not excluded because she was a foreigner or anything else. She was included among God's covenant people. And in fact, God uses her to help Moses be stronger in his own faith and to have the courage to go into Egypt to deliver God's people from Pharaoh's oppressive hand. So here's our good stuff from Exodus 4 today. We might make rules on our end as human beings for who is in and who is out, but God is constantly surprising us with how wide his circle is, for how wide his love is for all people, drawing in and including and even using the most unlikely people, like a Midianite woman named Zipporah. Said another way, these verses are yet more evidence of God's great love for all, period. For all people, period. To use those words of Galatians, we are neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male or female, for we are all one in God. I will see you this weekend for one more day with Exodus 4, 24 through 26.